They're mean green and on the screen, here's a look at the new NECA toys, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 1990 film. This is the seven inch Leonardo. Now you can catch America's favorite green teens in their first live action blockbuster film. After waiting in a puddle of radioactive waste, these radical reptiles are transformed into New York City's greatest crime fighting quartet. Uh, no one works, studies, or trains harder than Leonardo. He commands respects from his brother, leading by example, not giving orders. This highly detailed action figure stands 6.5 inches tall and features 30 points of articulation, includes double elbows and double knees to fully showcase Leonardo's stealthy moves. Anxiously awaiting to talk about this figure, but first we gotta wait and take the dimensions. Somebody's gonna, I'm sure, ask how tall these figures stand. And even though I did mention at the beginning of this review that they were six and a half inches tall, the Ultra Measuretron does confirm that Leonardo stands 6.5, 6.5 inches in height, which in centimeters, let me go ahead and do that right now for you eager viewers. You're looking at the figure standing 16.6. 16.6 centimeters tall. Next, we'll examine the figure's accessories. He comes included with a slice of pizza. From what I can gather, it seems like all the figures of the four brothers, all the turtles that is, do come included with their own slice of pizza. The slice of pizza is probably not something that I would be ordering myself. It seems to have anchovies. I'm guessing those with those little green slivers are. Looks like there's also olives. Uh, to a plus, it does seem like the turtles dig extra cheese. I'm all about the extra cheese on pepperoni, on my pepperoni pizza. But uh, I probably would pass on this pizza because I'm not digging olives. The olives are the one thing. Anybody that orders olives on pizza, shame on you. And shame on you additionally to that by telling somebody you could simply just take olives off of a pizza. It doesn't work that way. Olives go in there and sort of just spread their evil to everything they touch. Much like pineapple to a pizza. Also, shame on you who likes pineapple on your pizza. Hopefully not alienating anybody watching this review. You can't take pineapple or anchovies or olives off of a pizza and think that somebody can still eat it and not still taste all the evil. It's a little side rant. Also included, of course, he comes with not one, but two, a pair of katana blades. Thing! Uh, both the katana blades are cast in silver plastic and it looks like the handle has been painted in brown instead of vice versa. There's also these little notch points on the top that have some additional silver on there. I gotta believe that those are intentional. Those are featured at the top there. Oh, and he also has little rivet points down below as well. As I could probably best describe it by doing this, you could probably then imagine that these are a little on the brittle side. You would have to be correct by that assumption. These are a little on the thin side, so be a little careful if you are wielding these and certainly be very careful when you're putting them into Leo's hands. I'll show you those in a second. The other thing, of course, that it does come the option of is that you can take the katana blades and slide them into their supplied sheaths located on the back of his tortoise, tortoise turtle shell, I should say. Uh, they do slide into place. I wasn't aware that they had these notable, noticeable gaps on the top there. I'd have to go back, like I need a reason to check out the original film, and see if those open slots are present on the back of Leo's sheaths. They do slide into place relatively easy. It seems as well that you can flip them around and slide them in the opposite way. And there isn't much in the way of resistance. This side's not so bad. This side does feel like it hits a snagging point, but the katanas do seem like they fit into place. It's probably just the way the angle in which they have to be put completely flat in. The opposite way though, same idea. It seems to hit like a little bit of a resistance and then eventually just drop back into place. Maybe what we'll do is I'll leave the katanas there for the time being so you can watch, absorb, take it all in, and we'll have a look at the rest of Leo's accessories. He comes also included with a pair of high fives. Turtle power, you may be slapping these together, especially if we manage to pick up the rest of the Turtle Brothers, the other three of them, which we will be looking at on this channel. Oh, I just gave it away. 
probably assumed I was going to be having a look at all of them, especially for the fact we're just looking at Leo right here. Both the hands are beautifully sculpted, mixing a combination of what looks to be like a very light, almost military green, a swamp green, if you will, mixed with some tan colors of brown and some additional, almost like darker colors in there as well. The nails have been painted in there quite nicely in a almost lighter caramel color. I'm all about analogies and comparing the colors to something else. A pair of high fives, though, are uh, are included for these, and I don't know if they're included for all the turtles. I think they are, uh, but you, again, you get a pair of high fives. You could probably easily just mix and match these because the skin tone will be the same on all of them. Okay, and then this is pretty cool. Uh, he does also come with a bandana. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, wait a minute. He's already got one on this side. Ah, he does on this side here. The interesting thing, and I don't want to tempt Lady Luck any further by having those katanas in place, so I'm going to take those off for the time being. They are on this side. The bandana straps are on this side, but let's say you want to have it on this side. What you can do is you just flip the turtle around, just untab. This is pretty genius. Just untab this, just kind of wiggle this off until eventually it frees itself and then you're going to take the opposite one. I assure you that this is the opposite one. And again, you just reverse that process. Just wiggle that back into place. And now you've got the bandana on the other side. And just again, show you, it was no magic trickery. Uh, it is on the opposite side. So again, depending on which way you want to have it, because I'm certain as the movie progresses and Leo is entrenched in fighting the Foot Clan, I'm sure the bandana, the ends of the bandana have flipped around couple of different times so depending on which way you want to display it this side this side NECA's got you covered in both cases uh, those are his accessories moving further away from my rant on pizza hopefully and I, I didn't alienate anybody by doing that I'm so sorry for that let's have a look at Leonardo what a oh, oh, oh. Right now, I'm just putting my hand to my virtual head, this head right here that you can't see, and I'm just admiring the gloriousness that is this figure. I'm going to do my best very much as a honest reviewer. I would like my very best to not be so biased by the source material, but I got to admit, like, this is absolute perfection. I couldn't even think of what I would do differently to this figure to improve it. It certainly doesn't have much that I can see in the way of stumbling points. It's an absolutely perfect rendition of Leonardo from the original 90s film. Now, originally, if you had picked up any one of the turtles from NECA, you would have likely picked these up as the one quarter scale. As licensing, I guess, freed itself up, NECA was then able to reduce the size, as it usually goes with a lot of these pieces. Often at times, NECA will release a quarter scale figure because they probably can't get the licensing at that time for a smaller scaled figure. If not be the case, they would have likely introduced these right off the bat because I know myself personally, as much as I loved the quarter scale, I much enjoy the more comfortable dwellings that the smaller six and a half inch figure can occupy. It doesn't take up as much space and certainly on a shelf, it's a lot easier for me to display four of these guys versus four quarter scale turtles. Identically, I'm sure would be one to the other if you did actually have the quarter scale along the way and you do like those. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, lots of people enjoy the quarter scale figures. I personally find them a little on the tall side. I'm Again, I much more appreciate the smaller format of these figures. Uh, but these, again, are fantastic releases from NECA Toys. As far as I know, these are still GameStop exclusives. Uh, most of the time, uh, as it stands right now, they're a little harder to come by. So if you can either source them out and hopefully find a forgiving scalper that hasn't charged an arm and the leg to get one of these sets in your hands, I definitely would encourage, if you can, to pick these ones up. All the features, all the details, all the little spots and speckles that would have been on Leo in the movie, you got to imagine NECA has recreated that in the figure here. All these little spots that I loved so much really in, in the film itself that made all the turtles unique to one another seems not omitted here at all on Leo. The two-tone coloring also shows up rather nicely here. You, again, you got that green color, and you can see it there on the front. Uh, they've added this lighter shade. That lighter shade seems to make several appearances as you kind of just cascade your vision along these figures. You start seeing like little imperfections of paint kind of dancing together to bring together like uh, an imperfected sort of color scheme as it certainly was in the film. 
It wasn't a very singular color in the film. Leo, Michelangelo, Raphael, or Donatello really didn't have one color. They had several different colors kind of coming together and it, it recreates it quite nicely here in the plastic version of, of uh, Leo here. Of course, on the front, you've got his tortoise turtle shell. I keep wanting to default to tortoise. And as you can see, it connects itself back, much like a regular turtle will have, to the turtle shell featured on the back. Now, without actually having a look at all the turtles just yet, uh, I will say right now off the bat that it will likely be a case that the, the shell on the back was probably a reuse for all the figures. I don't 100% know just yet because we haven't looked at all of them just yet. But rest assured, when we do get these guys opened up, a comparison of each of them will be made to the one that I did before. And eventually when we get to the fourth turtle, I'll bring out all four of them so that you guys can get close-up looks on all of these guys. Love the little... Uh, little indentation to his cheek as you can see that Leo almost looks like he's hiding back a smile sort of like depending on which way you display him on one side it looks like he's sort of stoic deep in thought perhaps and then as you move your way around he's got this one cute little dimple happening on the side of his cheek the blue in his of course his bandana does a fantastic job of recreating the way it was in the film and even deep in that as you can see there is his turtle eyes done in two tones a dark brown and an outlined black to that you can even see the eyelid of the turtle the the turtle eyelid i should say is on the inside there of the bandana short of this video being about 45 minutes in length because i know i could certainly go on for hours almost it seems talking about these guys i certainly don't want this video to be overly long but let me just say like physically having this now in hand uh, something uh an experience i never really thought i was actually going to be able to have being that the the way that these guys were circulated and distributed it made it very impossible for especially here in canada to acquire these and then on the side, let me just lift that up once again. You've got this great airbrushing. It almost seems actually it's more like dry brushing that they've done on the interior of the shell. You've got the strapping that happens all the way around. These are unique to one of the, the each of the turtles. And you have these little rivet points in there as well. Even like the sheath, you can see has several colors. See even like roping and stuff that's tied the two together. One thing I do like that the movie turtles exhibited that the cartoon turtles didn't is the fact that only in their bandanas is there a unique uh, identifiable color. Everywhere else, like for example, their wrists, their elbow pads, and their knee pads are all one primary color, brown across the board. And even then, saying it solely just as brown, I feel like I'm doing a disservice to the figure because even as you can see within the brown, you can kind of see little notch holes or hole points in which the, the cording, this string was wrapped through it to tie the knee pad to around Leo's legs here. And again, I would have to believe that that would be the case with all the turtles. Uh, the shoulder pads, these are now these here are a little bit slightly softer. It's still of a solid plastic, but it does seem like it might have just a little bit, hopefully you can see it right there, a little bit of give to it. It does a good job of actually hiding the elbow joint. Um, it does also cause for a little bit of a, a little bit of a stumbling point where if you do want to bend the elbow, for example, you do feel like this is a bit in the way. But as best they could do, they hid the elbow seam the elbow articulation, which like I said, is behind that elbow or behind that elbow pad. Like I said, it's, it does cause for a little bit of, I don't want to say blockage, but bending the arms. You feel like they only do go to a certain point and then they abruptly stop from there. Uh, for this guy's articulation, yeah, I know. I, I could easily just spend an hour or two just looking at these guys and talking the praises of these releases. Uh, for this guy's articulation, because I know you guys need to go places. You have people you need to see after all. Maybe you're seeing turtles tonight. Ninja turtles? Call me. I'm, I'm interested. Uh, for the articulation on this guy, his head moves up and down. Uh, it does rotate all the way around. The bandana, by the way it attaches to itself, in theory, does also have the posability. So if you wanted to, you can almost even have it as if the wind is... Whoosh, 
that's not a sound effect I did that with my mouth blowing up and in the process of blowing up it's also blowing the bandana straps out this way a nice little effect if you're somebody who's into toy photography you certainly could go to town on these guys um, so that's his head articulation it does angle back and forth as well the shoulders hinge outwards as well you can rotate them all the way around as I said there is that little bit of resistance for the elbow it does seem like there's a double hinge happening on the elbow but unfortunately because this is so wide it sort of blocks part of this hinge and part of this hinge here if only they could have made this part just a little bit thinner enough that that elbow joint would clear itself you may actually be able to get a little bit more bending happening in the hands or in the forearms here at this point i sort of feel like i'm fighting against it the last thing i certainly would not want is for that joint to break because there's something sort of as an obstacle in the middle of that uh, the hands rotate or i should say the forearms rotate all the way around and you can also rotate the hands all the way around uh, the waist doesn't have, or the upper torso doesn't have necessarily a ball joint, just as you could probably guess it because the shell is taking up so much of that space. The legs do hinge outward. Uh, they do move forward. They move back. They bend not only one place, but two places in the knee. One there and one there. The knee, actually, this knee pad does a better job of hiding the joint, but still allowing full posability than I do feel like the arms do. The feet, finally, do have a hinge back and forth. Um, there is an ankle rocker as well, so if somebody is into more dynamic poses, you can certainly pull that off here with the leader of the Ninja Turtles. No, 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 we're not going to talk as Raphael being the leader. Forget about that rap song that happens at the end of the movie credits. I happen to still think that Leo is the leader. Sorry, rap song. I don't know whoever sang it. Uh, Raphael's not the leader. But in the way of figure releases... I think Leo leads the pack, and all the more reasoning why I want to start this series of four reviews, as again, you could probably guess it, four reviews will be coming for these guys. I wanted to start it with Leonardo, uh, one of my personal favorites of the Ninja Turtles. Unlike the movie turtles that started their smaller origins as pet shop turtles found in mutagen waste, these turtles actually started their origin much taller than the ones that we're looking at right here. Yes, everybody knows that NECA Toys originally had released the movie turtles in a quarter scale format, which was great, and I did manage to pick up the Leonardo and Michelangelo. Truth be told, I never got around to reviewing it because I was still waiting to get Donatello and Raphael. And that just never happened. In all honesty, as much as I love the movie Turtles and wanted to get them in my collection, space is always something that I still don't have a lot of luxury in. So even if I was able to pick up the Ninja Turtles in the quarter scale format, I just really wouldn't have had a whole lot of space to put them in. Why I'm so much more willing and eager to pick these up in six and a half inch format. Still, unfortunately, NECA Toys was able to release these, but as far as I know, they're still only left to GameStop, which is probably one of the reasonings why they can kind of get around the licensing. Sort of in a way, the Target exclusive of the Turtles, the Cartoon Turtles, uh, can kind of work around the licensing that Playmates has in place. That's probably one of the reasons why they were able to eventually get these guys down to a six and a half inch format. It had to be exclusives and likely only to one type of brick and mortar store, unlike readily available places like Toys R Us, Walmarts, and Targets. Now, these ones are great, but unfortunately, they are hard to come by, as anybody probably knows. If you were lucky enough to pre-order these online, congratulations, you were able to get yourself a set. Most of the stores now, from what I'm hearing, are still having a tough time stocking these. If you're able to get them in and get in there in time, you're able to get yourself a set. But most of the scalpers, unfortunately, are kind of getting their jabs in, kind of grabbing what is available. And, of course, selling them online for a lot greater of a price. If you guys can find these at an affordable price, without a doubt, I would say that these are worth picking up. I can't even imagine what else I would have done to this particular rendition of Leo. And I'm certain this is going to be the same thing I'm, I'm going to say for the other three brothers. I can't even think of what I would have done differently to improve the figure any more than what NECA has already done in this plastic release. The accessories are perfect. Uh, like I said, he does come with a slice of pizza. I'm not going to judge him for the fact that he has anchovies and olives on his pizza. That's not really my thing. But I do like even the fact that they have the bandana, something in which you can unpeg and switch over to the other side of his shoulder. Yes, indeed, this is definitely one of the best sculpts that NECA has been able to land. And uh, I, I, again, looking at this, if you can get, if you're somebody that does toy photography, 
a passion of which I would really like to get into myself. But hitting this figure in the right backdrop, in the right environment, and the right lighting, I would swear I'm looking at a still from the movie. The sculpt and the paint is that good. Again, if you guys can find it, that's the biggest obstacle. Like I said, they are available now. As far as I know, as far as I know they're still only exclusive to GameStop. Or if you can luck out and find them online. But just don't pay scalpers prices. The last thing I want to do is encourage picking up a glorious figure like this. But pay the ludicrous prices that some of these scalpers are getting these for. Don't do that. If you can find them in store though, most definitely. You want to pick these ones up. Add them to your collection. Today we were having a look at the new NECA toys. This was the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle original movie, six and a half inch Leonardo. Thank goodness he's six and a half inches. Now we are supposed to still get a quarter scale shredder. We've already seen images online. Follow NECA on Twitter. You can check out all the upcoming releases that they're doing over there. But they've already shown images of the quarter scale shredder. And we already know we're getting a quarter scale foot soldier. I hope eventually we'll be able to get the same similar treatment that the brothers here got. Shrink them down six and a half inch. Even if unfortunately it means they're exclusive to one store, eventually I would like to add Shredder and a Foot Soldier, even a Splinter, of course, to the really great sculpts that we've gotten here for the Four Turtles. Uh, like I said, only available at GameStop. Good luck. Don't pay scalpers prices, whatever you do. Uh, if you guys haven't had a chance to hit that little subscribe button down below, make sure you certainly do so. As like I said, we're going to have a look at the other three brothers. That would be Michelangelo, Raphael, and Donatello. You already know the names by now. Those guys will be coming up in a future review, probably just right around the corner. So stay tuned for those. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys next time.